Hello and welcome. I'm Clues Mike, and you're watching Modeling for Advantage. So today, Mrs. Kaiser has sent me over another 40k combat patrol to have a look at, and this one is gene stealer cults. Now, I've done a fair few of these videos and just incredibly first impressions on weight of box. This is going to be a good one. Let's see what's inside. Okay, let's see what we have in here. As I say, this is a massive box and really weighty, so I'm looking forward to seeing what contents we get inside here. I've managed to somehow keep the cellophane in one piece, which isn't good for camera glare purposes. So let's see what we've got. The instruction book, as always, as I will say, brilliant instructions, easy to follow, show you where and when not to use glue, um, all the different options you get, all the different builds, really nice, and also gives you useless stats in the back. Completely ignore those. Okay, we have a lot of bases. Looks like we have standard 25 mil for the smaller guys, and I think they're 32s for the bigger aberrants and probably the characters as well. What have we got here to start? These look like the aberrants, which are some of my favourite models in this army range. Uh, interestingly, the Gene Stealer Colts was one of my first ever 40k armies back in... <laughs> Showing my age, the early 90s, the Gene Stealers were released as a White Dwarf little supplement. They only had about five different models to choose from, but we had a really old copy of Space Hulk that I used the Gene Stealers from. I had a metal patriarch, a really big fat guy um, who used to sit on a chair and such. Um, and I used to use those in my very first Rogue Trader days of 40k. Um, so it's really nice to see this updated model range. This is an, an army I would love to own, but is an army that requires far too many models for me to want to paint. Um, I've already got a horde army in my Imperial Guard, I don't need another one. So, back to these models. These are the aberrants. These are the giant, mutated, kind of like, ogre-ish um, Gene Stealer cult models. Um, they have massive two-handed weapons. They give a real sense of brutality and kind of like weight behind their weapon use kind of like they grab all three arms grab a single hammer that kind of stuff look really cool uh, there's the infamous stop sign it is literally a signpost with a rock on one end and a sign at the other end and it's infamous because in <laughs> 8th edition 40k it was one of the best weapons in the game Throw away your thunder hammers, your power fists, all that kind of stuff. No, a stick with a rock on the end was far more powerful than that. Um, one thing I'll say about these, you don't get many options on them. Um, they get two types of weapon. They either get a single giant weapon or they get two different hand weapons. Um, and you don't get options in the kit. You have to build, like if you look at this guy's torso, he has a single hand weapon. It wouldn't surprise me if in the new rules, I haven't actually checked if they haven't changed them to instead of having different profiles for the two-handed and the single-handed weapons, that they've just given them something like heavy mining weaponry or something like that and just given them a flat stat. Um, because there's no options when building them, I think they've probably just amalgamated that into one different option. Uh, you get the bigger guy, who I think is the aberrant or... He is the slightly bigger aberrant, I don't know what it's called, the hypermorph or something like that, who comes with the stop sign. He, again, doesn't have any options, so not the best thing about that kit option-wise. Going down, we have here Gene Stealer Cult Magus. Gene Stealer Cult Army runs off its characters. It has maybe... 10 to 12 different character options. They're all pretty cheap and they're all very useful. And the army's kind of like designed to run a lot of them. Um, you also don't get to take multiple of the same one, um, not in the same detachment anyway. So you're kind of like encouraged not to. Uh, this is a Magus who is kind of like the uh, main psyker of the force and is also one of the cult leaders. Um, it's a really nice model. It's a feminine model without making it look silly. Um, which is really nice. Um, Games Workshop are really making a push nowadays to include far more feminine models in their, or female models, in their ranges um, that would allow it. Obviously, they're not they're doing it in Space Marines, but in most of the other factions, they are now 
putting men and women in as multiple times because obviously they should be there and it's really nice to see. Uh, this one does have one of the crimes of old though it has ladies in high heel boots. Um, they're getting away from that nowadays but this is still has it. But it's still a really nice sculpt, really good looking model. Um, and you'll want one in your army, they're very good. They're cheap psychers and Gene Slith Colt are good psychers. Then we have the Goliath Rock Grinder. This is a really cool vehicle. Um, it's really sturdy. They've made it much tougher in the new rules. It's got minus one damage. Um, it builds two different vehicles. One is a transport and one is a bit more of a gunboat. Um, I can't remember the exact name of the other one. The Goliath Rock Grinder and the Goliath something else. I think it's just a Goliath truck. Uh, the Rock Grinder part refers to it has a massive... I'm trying to find it on here. I'm sure it'll have a quite distinct piece, but I can't see it. I think it's this bit here, but it doesn't have all the doodads attached. So, ah, here we go. Here is the doodad frame. Um, it's got all the wheels, but it's also got all of these cutters and grinding wheels and stuff. Um, and they'll go on the front and make it lethal in close combat. If this thing runs into you, it will mulch you to death. doesn't really matter what you are. It's very deadly. It gets good guns. It's got um, giant flamers you can melt on, you can put on there. I think a seismic cannon. Uh, some really cool weapon options. And it's a, it's a big old tank as well. Look at those two sprues for one vehicle there. And they're pretty packed in there. Um, you've got crew options on there. Really nice vehicle. Really good in-game as well. You want to be able to transport some of your stuff. And it's also good that you can hide your models inside the transport. Saves them getting shot. Because one thing about Gene Steel Colt is they are squishy. Then next up we have the... Let's see if these are... These are the Neophyte hybrids. So these are your basic cult members. Your humans who have been infected... Um, by the Gene Stealers. Um, they have a range of weapons. They're basically guardsmen stat wise, um, but they get different types of weapons. So um, they have some of the standard stuff like flamers, grenade launchers, they get auto guns, but they can also take shotguns. Um, they get some bolt pistols. Um, one of the main things you do with these guys is you can kit them out with flame pistols um, and you can give them a lot of flame pistols for pretty cheap. Gene Steeler Cult was an army you can deep strike in at short range and really open fire uh, with their flame pistols. Um, so you want a lot of these. They also have a load of the heavy mining weaponry like seismic cannons, webbers, uh, things like that, um, which there are certain rules that you can put in effect in the Gene Steeler Cult army to make them very effective. Uh, so that is those. They get loads of options for heads. You can go with them. Um, more human style heads or you can go with more mutated gene stealer heads your choice um, a lot of people use these as base for kind of like a different type of guardsmen um, by kit bashing with imperial guard models and they're the exact same scale so they're really good to do that with an excellent kit loads of good detail really nice models next up we have looks like more of the same mm, how many oh you get 20 in this box. How about I feel so weighty? You get a lot of stuff in here. So another one of the same sprue, 20 of those models. Like I said, there's lots of options on them, so you can build them separately. Um, I don't believe that they're kind of like um, built, kind of like one weapon goes on one type of model. I think you can put them on all of them. Um, because if you look at the torsos, you'll see they're kind of like a Space Marine torso of old where they have just two flat parts either side where you'd mount the arms. And I'm a big fan of that in models because it means you can stick any arms on any torsos and you can generally stick any torsos on any set of legs as well and then any head on top of any torso. So real mix and match. And in an army where wouldn't be strange to have 40 to 50 of these guys, you really don't want them all looking the same. So you can have really nicely customised units. Great kit. Lastly, we have the Acolyte Hybrids. So these are a, another troop unit you can take. These ones are a bit more gene stealered up. They basically got extra limbs and they generally have more close combat weapons. Um, they get some heavy industrial weaponry as their close combat weapons. So they got some really cool looking stuff. Some of it looks a little orky, some not. So you've got things like up here, you've got the jaws of life basically, and they are lethal um, mortal wound dealing stuff. You've got massive great... Um, uh, what's it called? Buzzsaw blades, 
incredibly lethal in game you've got a couple of those on there you also get some tyranid bits so you can see you've got a lash whip there you've got bone swords down here you've got pistols you've got uh, flame pistols here hmm it's possible that this is the unit that gets the flame pistols because i can see quite a few here on this sprue so maybe that last one doesn't get flame pistols and this is the unit that does um you can see it's also got lots of more gene stealer type arms so these are just a more mutated version they get a cool banner gene stealer cult as a whole can take banners in most units which can give them uh, models back each turn so that is those so how many models do we get in here uh, we've got 20 of the basic guys we've got five of these five aberrants of characters so that's 31 infantry plus a big tank and these are all nice brand new multi-part kits um, I think that is great value there. This is a really good way to start the army. If you were um, getting into Gene Stealer Cult, buying this would give you a massive dose of troops, which you need loads of in the army. Uh, the only downside would be the Magus, um, because you're unlikely to want two. Uh, you might be able to trade one off for one of the other characters. You might be able to kit bash it as well. I mean, I'm, I'm a big fan of that. There's loads of spare parts here kit bash it to look like something else the aberrants great models but they are a bit monopose so having two sets of five they're likely to look very similar unless you do some cutting yourself to the models and also a slight downside is in-game aberrants are very poor at the minute they're supposed to be the elite close combat unit um but but they really are not. Um, and they're not particularly tough for their points either. So they're generally overlooked. But this is 40k and a new edition is likely around the corner later on um, in the next like, 12 months. And they'll probably change it up and make them brilliant again. So having the models is no bad thing. Uh, I think this one is a slam dunk winner. Really nice models. Lots of them. Good value kit there. If you were going to start this army, I'd be picking up minimum one of these. Um, probably more, especially if you can find a use for the extra Maguses, but really good value and just, just a lot of plastic in that box. Thanks for watching all. If you're still here and you're looking for ways to support the channel, there's obviously a lot of ways down in the description, but a key way is to use our affiliate links to Whaling Games and others. You buy your models from them, it doesn't cost you a penny more, and we earn a little bit of commission. Thank you.